Hello guys. Uh, this week we're going to be doing an Electude module on the charging system. Now I've modified things a little bit to make it easier for you to keep track of where the information is and what you're expected to be doing each week. So I want to walk you through that first. Um, when you click on your content over here, on the left side, you guys probably have a bunch more tabs or a bunch more uh, buttons here than I do, but you're going to see a folder under my individual contact called Fundamentals eLearning. When you click on that one, what you're going to see now is I've broken the assignments out by week. So if you have lost track of time and maybe you're a little behind on things, uh, this will help you kind of get a little more organized and figure out what modules you need to be doing. This week, we are working on these modules here, um, or this module here uh, for the Monday, Tuesday class. On Wednesday, Thursday, we'll have a different assignment we'll get into later. So I select that. And here's the one module you need to do for the start of this week on the charging system. So let's get started. Now, the charging system, its main job is to power all of our electrical accessories and also recharge our battery. So we'll read through the top part here. It says vehicles have a large number of electrical loads, such as the starter motor, lights, rear window, heater, and navigation system. Some of the other things that are becoming really common are seat heaters, um, some of the defrosters um, that are built in the windshield wiper systems, also um, all the other accessories going on on the inside of the car are becoming um, rather demanding. The charging system supplies current to all these loads and charges the battery. The battery has to be fully charged after each trip to be able to start the vehicle again. When the battery is only partially charged, the positive and negative plates start to sulfate. Um, you guys as high school students often are pretty abusive on your batteries because you start your cars, you drive to school, it's a short trip, or you drive to work, it's a short trip, you turn your car back off. You're not giving your battery time to fully charge. It's kind of like charging your cell phone in and expecting it to have 100% after 10 minutes of charging or 15 minutes of charging. We all know that's not going to be the case. So... It is good to drive your cars for a little distance um, as often as possible to give that battery time to charge up. That might mean taking the long way home just so that your battery has a little more charge time. The charging system consists of the engine, the alternator, the battery, and the ignition key, and then the charging current warning light, which will be right there. So our first question is, what are the tasks of the charging system? It is going to be to provide current to all electrical accessories, to ensure there's sufficient energy reserved to crank the engine during startup, and also building up a reserve of energy. And we'll move on to the next one. Which components are classified as electrical consumers, which means they use energy? Um, our lighting system definitely uses it. The blower motor for our air conditioning and heat definitely uses it. And our starter motor, when we go to start our car, definitely uses it. The alternator actually creates energy, kind of like a wind turbine. And the battery also gives us energy, much like powering your cell phone. Number three, now it wants us to find these things on the car. So our engine block, we've got our alternator for creating electricity, our battery for providing electricity, our charging system indicator lamp telling us that there's a problem, and then our ignition switch to turn all this stuff on and off. And now we're gonna go to number two on the top. So operation. The engine drives the alternator so that it can supply electrical energy to the loads. What they're saying is this only works if the engine's running. I have a lot of students that say they're hanging out with their friends, they're playing basketball, they just had the key turned on to play the radio, you know, to enjoy a little more entertainment, and eventually their battery went dead. The reason is, just like your cell phones, you can only use it for so long before the battery goes dead. However, if the car is running, this is what we're about to see in a minute. The alternator is going to provide the power, and therefore you won't kill the battery. So you've got to have the engine running to be able to power the alternator. Um, the amount of energy that the alternator supplies depends on what is being demanded 
by the load devices and the battery. The alternator must be capable of supplying 100 amps to be able to supply all loads and charge an empty battery at the same time. The amount of energy that the alternator supplies drops to almost zero when the battery is fully charged and no loads are switched on. This might be, you know, a nice summer day where you got the windows rolled down. Um, you don't have the radio on, no headlights are on, seat heaters are off. Um, you, the alternator really doesn't have to power much. The warning light on the dashboard indicates any fault in the charging system. So the first thing it wants us to do is turn the key until the engine starts. Observe the flow of energy when the engine is running. What you're going to see is a red line appear right here. And it happens kind of fast, but you're going to see a really big red line because it takes a lot of power to power the starter and crank the engine. Then you're going to see a smaller red line go from the alternator to the battery. So let's try this. Go down here to the key, crank it, and you see that big red line? And now it goes to a smaller red line. So the size of that red line indicates how much power, how much current is going through it. So we sent a lot of power to our starter to start the car. Now that the car is running, and we can see it by the RPMs right here, now the alternator is spinning and able to send power back to the battery to recharge it. We'll go to the second one. Turn the key to crank the engine. Observe the flow of electricity. What happens during engine cranking? And things it wants us to look for. The starter motor cranks the engine. The alternator supplies energy to the battery. The alternator supplies energy to the starter motor. Or the battery supplies energy to the starter motor. So let's see what happens. Start it again. We see that big red line. And now we see a small red line coming from the alternator to the battery. So at first it went from battery to starter. Now it's going from alternator to battery to recharge it. So what did we observe? The starter motor cranks the engine. Yes, it did. The alternator supplies energy to the battery. Not during cranking. That only happens after it starts running. The alternator supplies energy to the starter motor. Nope. The part that did that was actually the battery that sent it to the starter motor. And the battery supplies energy to the starter motor. Yes, that is true. And we'll go to number three. So now we're going to start the engine. And once the engine has started, we're going to see if any of these things happen. So let's do this again. Grab the key. You see that big red line? Now you see the smaller one coming from the alternator. So now my engine's running. Alternator's creating power. So now that it's running, what do we observe? The engine drives the alternator. Yes, that's true. We got these belts right here that are spinning the alternator, creating power. The starter motor cranks the engine. Not after it started. The alternator supplies energy to the starter motor. No, that was the battery doing that. And the alternator supplies energy to the battery. Yes, that's true, because right now it's recharging it. And we'll go to option four. What do you notice as you watch the energy flow during and after starting? So if we recap, we saw a big red line going to the starter to start it. And then once the engine was running, we saw a smaller red line going from alternator back to the battery to recharge it. It's kind of like plugging your cell phone in. And if we paraphrase that, what we observed was the energy flow from the battery to the starter motor was smaller. Well, right away we know that's false because it was actually larger. So let's look at the second one. The energy flow from the battery to the starter motor is larger than the energy flow from alternator to battery. That is true. So it's a lot of power to start your engine. That's why in the winter, um, if your car's not starting, you're sitting there cranking it, that's why the battery goes dead pretty quick. And number five, the ignition, lighting, and blower can be switched on now. Switch the ignition key to on, engine off, then turn the lights on. What do we notice? So what they're asking us to do is like, when you guys are hanging out with your friends and you're starting to use power from the battery, and we're going to see how long, where that, or we're going to see where that power actually comes from. 
So we're just going to go one click forward, light up the dash. We're not actually going to start it this time. And now it wants us to turn on the lights. So we'll go over here to our light switch. And where do you notice that power is coming from? Is it the alternator? Nope. It's coming from the battery. So eventually what's going to happen to our battery? Eventually it's going to wear down and going to run out of power. So this is why if you leave your headlights on overnight or you go to school and leave them on, eventually your battery is going to be that when you come back to the car. So right now the battery supplies energy for the lighting. And it can't do that for very long. So let's go to number six. This time we're going to start it. And I'm going to ask you guys, where does the power come from when you start it? Think about it. Where is the power going to come from after we start it? There we go. And now we see my alternator is providing the power. And as long as my engine's running, it's going to keep providing power. My only limiting factor is how much gas I have. When I run out of gas, well, then it stops working. But as long as it's running, alternator keeps creating power. So I'm not really limited by time now. So this time around, it wants us to observe what happens when you switch the lights on with the engine running. So let's turn those lights back on again. And now we see we've got the alternator sending quite a bit of power back to my battery because what does it want to do? It's trying to recharge it as fast as possible. It's also sending a smaller amount of power to my headlights. So now I can drive with my headlights on, I can sit there with my car parked with my headlights on and I'm not gonna kill the battery because it's coming from my alternator. So the alternator supplies energy for the lighting. Yes, that's true, we see it right here. The battery supplies the energy for the lighting. Well, no, that's false because we don't see any red lines connecting them. Alternator's doing it. The alternator supplies energy to the battery. Yes, it does. We see that occurring right here. And now we'll go to number seven. Now we're gonna turn on the blower motor, which is this part right here. This is what blows the air inside of your car to either give you air conditioning, heat, or fresh air. And right here is a switch for that. And now you're going to see another red line appear, sending power to my blower motor. What we also observe, though, is that this line got smaller. It got smaller because my alternator can only create so much power. And every time we ask more demands from it, it sends less power back to the battery. So what do you notice when you observe the energy flow? The energy flow from the alternator to the electrical accessories decreases. No, that's not true. Um, the total energy flow from the alternator decreases. No, that's not true. Um, when the electrical accessories are switched on, energy flow from the alternator to the battery decreases. Now it's going to take longer to recharge my battery. And we'll go to number eight. Which component supplies the electrical... I'm sorry, which component supplies the energy to the electrical accessories when the engine is running. You guys tell me, what is it? Which options are gonna be here? You got it, it's gonna be the alternator. When is the battery gonna provide the power? When the car's turned off. What is the energy reserve used for? Now the energy reserve is going to supply power to electrical accessories when the engine is not running and let's even back up a second. What do they mean by energy reserve? What they're talking about is the battery. When does the battery provide the power? And that's going to be when the engine's not running and supplying power to the starter motor when starting it. Yes, that's also true. So my battery will provide power to starter to get the car going. Number 10. What can you say about the charging system in a car? The energy generated by the alternator is distributed between electrical accessories and the battery. Yes, that's true. So it's got to power a lot of different things. The alternator supplies energy when the car is not running. Is that true or false? 
when it's not running. That's going to be false because the battery does that. The battery supplies energy when the engine is not running. That's true. Battery does that. And the alternator supplies energy during starting. That's going to be false because what does that? It's the battery that does that. All right, now we've finished our charging system module. I uh, hope you guys understand how this works a little bit better and how your car is actually creating energy. All right, enjoy your day, guys.